Hey there, Ron Legrand here. I have people often ask me, how do I buy a home for my family to live in without going to the bank and putting up an application and putting up a big old down payment? And the answer is, you do it my way, plant her on way. I'm gonna show you an example of a property we just got a contract on, and it's a perfect example for you to see how it works. I just got a contract to purchase a property, in fact, practically brand new home, for $450,000, and the value of that property is $500,000 plus, actually. The seller's big motivation is he can't take the payment anymore and he's moving out of town. And so I got a $2,800 principal interest taxes and insurance payment on the property that the owner of the house pays the bank every single month. So when I come in there to buy this property, and if, this, if I were looking for a home, this would be a good one to uh, use as an example because I'm an investor. I'm buying this. I'm going to put a lease option tenant buyer in it and make a profit on it. And in a minute, I'll give you a link to where you can find out how to do that as well. In your case, though, if you need a home, you'd simply buy this and then move in it instead of selling it, sell it later perhaps. So they ask him for 50 but this, uh, so that's what we paid for it, 450, and it's worth over $500,000. It's only two years old. It's in beautiful condition. Now the seller owes 345. So the seller's got $105,000 equity between the 450 that I'm paying and the 345 that he owes. But he's agreed that if I buy the property and take over his payment. And he's given me 10 years to pay him off, 10 years. So I'm going to own this property for 10 years or less till somebody I put in it cashes it out and go gets a new loan on it. Uh, but here's the point. At number one, the seller asked for 50. I gave him what he asked. Didn't ask for any money down. He just wants to get that payment off his back. And we've agreed that I'll start making payments in the third month after I buy the property. So what I'm going to buy this property on is what we call a wraparound mortgage a wraparound mortgage. I'm going to have my attorney create a note and mortgage to this uh, seller for the 450 that uh, I owe him. That won't be in my name. This will be in an entity's name. So there's no personal liability at all on this for you or for me. So, but, but he's going to create a mortgage for 450 with a note for that that is structured so that the payment on the 450 is exactly the same uh, principal interest payment on the $2,800 uh, that I, I'll be paying the bank directly, uh, but I've, I'm, I'm, uh, there's going to be a contract to the seller for the 450. So in other words, he's not getting this $105,000 in here right now. He's going to wait until I cap house cashes out to get that. So his big motivation was to get the 2800 off, not to get this equity out of the house. Now what I'm going to buy, I'm going to buy it on what's called a wraparound mortgage. That means that the 450 that I paid a seller wraps around the 345 that the seller owes. And this is a little difficult for some folks to comprehend, so listen closely, maybe you get it. I owe the seller 450, seller owes the bank 345. 450 wraps around the 345. Now, when I, so every time I make a payment, my principal is gonna go down at the same rate the seller's principal goes down at the 345, if that makes sense to you. So that's one way to buy a house there's nobody qualifying. There's nobody filling out a contract. I mean, not a contract, an application. There's nobody going to a bank and asking permission. The only permission that I need is the seller's per, uh, permission. And orally on the phone, we've already agreed to that. We'll have a contract on that tomorrow afternoon. So what's that have to do with you? Well, like I said earlier, you can buy this property and move in. Think about it. No application to the bank. No down payment even. But I will have to pay about the... $4,000 in closing costs on this. Uh, seller's not getting any money, so I'm going to pay the closing costs. So in reality, I'm going to have about four grand and getting a half a million dollar house. And <clears throat> that's it. So it's that easy to buy a house. Another thing you can do is you can lease option the house. Lease option. That means I'm not buying the house. I'm leasing it with the right to buy it anytime during this 10 year term and I want to buy it. And that also gives me the right to sell it. So anytime they turn that 10 years, I can sell the property uh, for whatever it's worth or whatever it's worth at that time and keep the difference between that 
and the uh, four, uh, what's left of the 450 to die over the seller. So I hope that makes sense. And so, in other words, I don't have any closing costs if I lease it with an option to buy, whereas I got about $4,000 worth of closing costs if I buy it. Now, I'm an investor. I want to buy it. But if I'm an owner occupant type person I want to live in, I might just take the cheaper route and actually they're not I put up any money to get into the house. And I know there's a lot of questions you have on that. So if you have questions, just go to uh, ask at ronlegrand.com and shoot them to me and I'll get them answered for you. Down below you'll see a link where you'll see a lot more training on this. Literally I take you step by step through what we call the terms business, which is my favorite way to buy houses. In fact, I bought two houses on terms this week alone. And you can see uh, how easy it is when you're just having the seller finance it. In this case, that's what's happened. The seller's financing it, but I'm going to be making a payment directly to the bank. So I hope, hope that helps. Go down and hit that link right now, and you'll, we'll spend some time together.